Why, hello there. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, my name is Mr. Dogboat 33 and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, Culture Creek, as New England. Last video, we ratified NATO, the North American Trade Organization. We're working on helping out the Great Lakes government get some investment going, because they really seem to need it. They're not doing that hot. Glory to NATO, indeed. We love NATO in this chat. And look at that. We formally we have formalized the Accord. The Entente has been formally recreated in a successful meeting in Ottawa today, now being known as the Accord. The successful conclusion was heralded by days of meetings and negotiations in which a positive result for all nations participating was created. The Accord goes beyond any standing military alliance, creating a unified command structure, a voting system to make decisions for the whole alliance, and budget requirements for all nations. The Accord has also not hidden its attention on or its purpose, specifically targeting Germany as a hegemonic state bent on dominating the weak and undemocratic in nature. Germany's response to the formation of the new alliance has mostly been mute as of now, but there's no denying the cooling of relations between Canada, the leader of the Accord, and the German Empire. As the documents are revised, it appears that all issues have been ironed out and everything necessary has been included. All delegates seem to be satisfied with the final product, and the only thing left to do is to sign the formal agreement, and the Accord will be formed. This will require the signature of every delegate, which will no doubt be achieved. Soon enough, the Accord will lead the world into the future. Get that pen to a museum. This is what I'm talking about. So are these guys going to get cores at all? It does not look like it yet. Quarterly growth report. The return of Wall Street. Go ahead and create the next generation. Let's get to it. To really heal from the scars of cynicalism and longing, we must ensure the next generation of New England understands the dangers of extremism. Exposing the horrendous crimes committed by both the CS combined syndicates and the American Union state to our students will be the best way to prevent a third. American Civil War. I'm wondering when election season is going to kick off. The election is going to be in November. Proper. Okay, Republicans. Oh, they're doing... F I think the main Republicans will be fine with that ma minor setback. They got like... Their margins are fine right now. Um, atomic weapons. Let's work on support weapons next. Doing the flamethrowers. All right, so let's introduce some local administration and infiltrate socialists in Philadelphia. Socialist influence there is low. It is low already, but might as well make sure we get that all ironed out. The Malagasy uprising. Interesting. Breaking news out of New York City, where high-ranking senators have been implicated in a major sca statewide scandal. Although the senators refused to comment, almost all of them points to some level of involvement. While their political parties distance itself from the senator, recent polling has shown that the party will take a strong hit. Regardless, it remains to be seen if that senator will be able to recover from the recent scandal. Interesting indeed. Um...
we're doing with compliance. We're getting there. We just need to do a little bit more. Soft touch, I think, will help. Uh, if our government was to arrest every former member of CSA, we would hardly have a country to run. Keeping our pacification platform focused on military officers and government officials will allow us to root out threats of democracy while showing our newest citizens that we fight on the side of justice. Earl Warren, look at that. Common Earl W. Syria descends into civil war. Interesting. Okay. The map makers will be pleased. Um. Cindy's versus ultra nationalists. Um. Is that a woman? You got a national populist girl boss. Look at that. Engineer companies. Let's get all this going. Dissolved in the fires of the Second American Civil War, New Englanders have begun to claim for the return of professional baseball. While some clubs have been reformed and played some informal games, professional baseball has been dormant for years. The new MLB will be formed out of eight teams split into two leagues, the American League and the National League, as it was before the war. The American League will be made up of the Red Sox, the Yankees, the Philadelphia Athletics, and the new Buffalo Bisons. The National League will be made up of the New York Giants, Brooklyn Dodgers, Boston Braves, and the new Philadelphia Phillies. The Bisons and Phillies were new additions that will round out the league. The team will play 154 seasons, and the top team in each league will play in the World Series each October. The name of stars expected to shine on the new stage are Yankees infielder Phil Rizzuto, Phillies outfielder Stan Musial, Red Sox pitcher Mickey Ferris, and Dodgers pitcher Ralph Branca. President Raymond E. Baldwin is expected to throw out the first pitch in April in Fenway Park in Boston on opening day, which will feature the Red Sox and Yankees. Play ball! Been to a Fenway Park before. It's actually pretty cool, even if you're not a baseball fan. I would recommend going. A few days of calmly sending people home, requisitioning trolley and subway trains, brandishing machine guns, and smoking cigarettes later, the National Guard has successfully passed by the city of Philadelphia. Strike finally being ended by an ultimatum from the government promising to cut several wartime benefits afforded to unionized workers in Philadelphia. Well, there are a few instances of civil unrest, including one where PRTEU workers drove a streetcar through a black neighborhood, shooting wildly at the streets and mildly injuring a child, and one where a black worker threw a paperweight at, at the Liberty Bell. The city has remained mostly calm and has gone back to work, now with soldiers driving and guarding their public transport. All civil rights activists in the black population in Philadelphia have received the news of a show of force from government warmly. Reception among whites in the public in Pennsylvania and New England in general has been definitely more lukewarm. While polls indicate a slim majority of the city's population wouldn't have minded black drivers on their daily commute, most of their concerns were over the strike and its obstruction, and not the civil rights dispute at hand. Furthermore, the government's actions have been interpreted by activist groups as, and more progressive politicians as a sign of the government's willingness to advance the cause of civil rights, and are now expectedly demanding further action be taken to fix the cracks in a seemingly ideal Northeastern society. Are they ever happy with anything? Honestly, it sounds like some, exactly like something a Philadelphia resident would do. Probably. Lend-Lease. For the Guangzhou government. Wars on the rise between Guangzhou government and Beiyang government. Letting China fall to the German line Bay Yang government would be a disaster for the Entente of the world stage. Such an issue brought before Gord. Allow court country to send material support to Guangzhou government. Yeah. I will vote yes on that. Oh, speak of the devil. I'm okay. Thank you for the follow, Emma Wilson PF. How are you? What do we got here? Very 
interesting. I'd say I like it, yeah. The Cone Crisis. Looks like Germany's not doing too hot. Of course, it's in New Jersey. When the average person thinks of the KKK, an image of a southern patriarch in a white hood will often come to mind. And as much as a northerner would like to think this to be the case, the North East has been a long-time hotbed for Klan activity. Before the Civil War, the KKK has tens of thousands of members across New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania alone. But as the chaos of the Civil War broke out, much of the northern Klan was slaughtered by senseless militias, and even more joined the Minutemen and fled south to longest territory. Those who remained either kept that their head low in New Jersey after the war or moved to excluded rural areas of upstate New York and Maine. As New England's demographics shifted to majority Catholic once America's new borders were settled, the Klan began to bide its time with public scrutiny at an all-time high. However, there's been a noticeable increase in Klan activity now that New Jersey has regained statehood. In the last five months, there have been a reported 11 cross burnings outside African-American churches, as well as one at each synagogue and Catholic church. These activities have thus far been limited to South Jersey, with the majority of incidents occurring in Salem County, their new base of operations. In response to this rejuvenated Klan, New Jersey's governor has increased funding for New Jersey State Police and created a task force to investigate their criminal activities. What is perhaps more disturbing is the possibility that their position on the AUS border is no coincidence at all. It's speculated not, that not only their ranks have been bolstered by repatriated minimum loyal to the AFB, but that their criminal activities have been funded by a smuggling operation across the Delaware River. An increased presence of AUS manufactured goods like Coca-Cola and Colt firearms has alerted the attention of federal law enforcement. New Englanders now look on with trepidation as the Klan might be heralding a much longer, larger, longest threat. Old hate never dies. Wait, Coca-Cola is an exclusively AUS thing? I think I'm on the wrong side now. What's your level? Uh, this game does not have levels. Um, I occasionally stream regularly. I try to. I mean, it makes sense now that I think about it, because Coca-Cola is from Georgia, but... Man. Went to a military mission. Let's propose this. Material support to the Kwanji government has been helpful. It's been clear that we need foreign boots on the ground to ensure victory. This issue passed by the court will authorize the American government to spend a small force of volunteers to the Guangzhou government. I'm voting yes. Did that pass? I'm confused. It looks like it did. Look at that. I can send some volunteers. Well, let's send one guy. Give you a general. We'll send you over with George Keeney. She called in my Krieg. True. Some guys to uh, Guangzhou. Now let's go ahead and institute the blanket man. Socialist Party of America lost all credibility as a Democratic Party when Jack recontested the election results in rebellion against the federal government in 37. The SBA must be banned from all future elections to prevent our treasured democracy from being destroyed. Um, I don't think it is. But I'm not sure yet. I'm ju I just started playing it. Washington. Ooh. Placeholder. Event describing a Brazilian financial mission to the NATO. Brazil wants a new loan to research for foreign debts, mostly owed to Yankee banks. The mission fails due to infighting plaintiff Mac incompetence. What a disaster. <coughs> That's uh Okay, this is interesting. Looks like these guys 
Also war with these guys. Battle in Millennium Yawn, true. From America, yes I am. There we go. Let's get those volunteers going. We'll also send some Len Lease, I think. Which ones are we producing right now? Picture equipment too. Start one lease. I knew it. Why are you pushing this particular branch of the Chinese bloodbath? Because they're aligned with our interests. feeling that was going to be the case. Um, send over some gun, uh, those leftover guns. We'll send uh, our New England boys up, Mr. Kenny. I, I had like a, I had a feeling it was a spam bot. But I was like, you know what? I I, I I was willing to hear it out for a second. I, I wanted to be proven wrong. I was not. And I banned that I banned that bitch myself. Area, yes. Turn of Alexander the second. Alexander the second, King of Poland. Oh, this is a super vague, completely unrelated question. These default. Yep. What syndicalists were stand for? Basically, uh, Cindy's are. Uh, Essentially, trade unionists, like socialism, and like government ran through trade unionists. Um, communist acti activists fight urban decay in Roxbury. Found it. Oh, community, not communist. You guys see where my mind's at. Founded by husband and wife team Otto and Muriel Snowden, the Freedom House looks to centralize community activism in the Boston neighborhoods of Roxbury. The couple, who previously worked in social services, looked to reverse the urban decay that began to grip Upper Roxbury through a series of no neighborhood improvement programs. In addition, the Snowdens looked to bolster relations between the neighbors' African American and Jewish residents. Talks regarding the foundation of an interracial school have been held, but no plans have been confirmed at this time. The work of the Freedom House comes at a critical time as pressure builds on the New England government to address the growing civil rights movement that is making its way through the continent. The fight for equality starts here. Let's try to head to Wuhan. Enforce these guys the best we can. Steam now the move to my account because I enjoy it responsibly. That is a bold thing to do. 
ask question of their own. Yeah. Like I, I knew someone was off when, when when they asked me what level I was. I'm like, this game doesn't have levels, bitch. What are you what are you talking about? I we still need to, some more compliance. So let's go ahead and get let's preserve Independence Hall. 1776, our founding fathers signed a declaration of independence in Philadelphia, signifying the beginning of the US of A. 172 later, our country is split by a dangerous ideology that goes against the founding fathers' intentions. We must preserve the hall in which democracy in the new world began, so as to not forget the foundations of our country. Hundreds of protesters have taken to the streets in light of a recent ban of the Socialist Party of America. While the strongest protests were seen in the new states or a cyber rally is in Massachusetts and Vermont. Progressive parties claiming the SBA has the right to run a New England election on the basis of the First Amendment. However, government has argued that the SBA lost all of its rights after its role in the Second American Civil War. Either way, the Progressive Party does not have enough power to change our decision. The protest will most likely end in a few weeks. This is necessary for our security. End of the Birmingham Trials. Mm. Interesting indeed. What level are you? This is Hearts of Iron 4. What are you talking about? Alright, we're holding the line in Wuhan. We can only hope that this will be enough. But it's not going to be enough to keep this going. This video, I mean. I got in it here. Thanks all of you two people for watching. Like, like this video if you liked it. Just like if you didn't. Leave any comments, feedback down in the comment section below. I read all the comments again. And I appreciate it. I'll figure out for me. Check in my various links down in the description box below. Hit the sub button and the notification bell for uploads weekly as well as occasional Saturdays. Make sure to check out the links down in the description box below. Including which which this was filmed on live. Thanks for watching, gang. My name has been Mr. Dogbot33. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.